Hi, I'm Christoph, a theoretical physicist here in Munich at the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics. This is actually not a shredder. Rather, it's a model of a black hole. In the next 10 minutes, I will clear up with some common misconceptions you might have about black holes and offer you a new perspective based on quantum information. I'll also show you some of our original research. Maybe you think of a black hole like a gigantic vacuum cleaner sitting in outer space and relentlessly sucking everything inside that comes close. Instead, you should rather think of a shredder. And if something comes close to the shredder, then it will not only be sucked inside, And when something comes close to the shredder, it will be sucked in, but also shredded and scrambled up completely. Then, maybe you think that the information in this note has completed and is destroyed forever. But rather, black holes actually do expel some information. This is also extremely exciting from a physics point of view, because in this situation here, the two fundamental theories of uh, contemporary physics are at clash. The first of these two fundamental theories is general relativity, uh, developed by Einstein. It describes the curvature of space-time and the fabric of space itself, and how planets and large objects move. And, bingo, black holes. In this context, you have probably heard of Stephen Hawking. But do you know about his discovery in 1975? Stephen Hawking discovered Hawking radiation, which is a radiation that black holes emit. So they do actually expel some of their information in the form of Hawking radiation. But Hawking also calculated that the Hawking radiation is completely featureless. So what this means is a very diligent bachelor student for this shredder here would be able to puzzle everything back together. But Hawking calculated that in a black hole this is not possible and the information is really destroyed, there is just some Hawking radiation coming out. Now the second great theory of contemporary physics is quantum physics. It describes very small particles. So, for example, if you want to understand how an atom works, that's pure quantum physics. And one of the important pillar stones of quantum physics is that information can never be destroyed. Physicists would call this unitarity, and basically information can be moved about or scrambled up, but never destroyed. And now this is an obviously at clinch and in contrast to what I was just telling you about Hawking radiation, where Hawking calculated that information is destroyed. And this clinch of the two theories is called the black hole information paradox. There has been much debate on it by uh, many very intelligent physicists. And for a long time it was an open question but uh, lately I will show you how it is uh, resolved nowadays. The real universe out there is an awfully complex place and it is too difficult to study this information problem with real black holes. Therefore, as theoretical physicists we simplify and instead we consider an so-called ADS universe. So the advantage of this ADS, anti de Sitter space, is that it has some very nice mathematical properties and I won't go into details here, but these allow us to formulate the holographic principle. So the holographic principle tells us that the three-dimensional universe and everything happening inside is equivalent to a two-dimensional quantum theory. So we can describe everything in this three-dimensional anti de Sitter space, like the black hole, in terms of this quantum theory. Now, as I told you, uh, we know that in this quantum theory, information can never be destroyed. It can only be moved about and scrambled. But then, because it's equivalent to the three-dimensional ADS black hole over here, also information in the black hole can never be destroyed. So as this holographic principle was fleshed out, uh, Stephen Hawking actually conceded and admitted that the Hawking radiation does contain information from the black hole. So if you collect enough of the Hawking radiation, then you will be able to piece back together 
the information and the notes and whatever fell into the black hole. But the information doesn't just simply come out the same way it came in. And it's not even just scrambled and shredded like here in the setup. Instead, it is quantum scrambled. To show you the difference, let me start with normal classical scrambling, just like the shredder here. So the shredder tears up the note. And let's scramble them classically. So now when we look at an individual uh, piece of this, of course you will see some of the information because <laughs> it's just classically scrambled. Now let us quantum scramble the pieces. So now they're quantum scrambled, which means that they are not independent anymore. Instead, the pieces form one gigantic entangled state. So even if one piece is over here and the other is there, they're invisibly connected by uh, quantum entanglement. And quantum states are very fragile objects. Usually a speck of dust or a bit of wind would completely destroy the state. That's why they have to work very hard here in the labs to keep the quantum states. But luckily I'm a theoretical physicist, so we can just imagine that all the pieces here form one quantum state. Now, if you measure and look at a piece individually, then it looks empty. In fact, each of the pieces, individually, they're empty. Only if you look at several pieces at once, will you be able to recover some of the information. This is because the information is not present on one piece or the other piece anymore, but rather in the entanglement, in the quantum entanglement between the pieces. And basically the same here happens in the black hole. When something falls inside, it is quantum scrambled. Then it is later re-emitted with the Hawking radiation. And since it's quantum scrambled, a single scrap of Hawking radiation will look empty. Only if you collect a larger amount of it will you be able to recover whatever fell into the black hole. Some further, more subtle problems on the information paradox, however, persist. And for this, the speed of scrambling is very important. This is something we also study in our own research. Let me show you at our poster. Recently, I presented this poster about our original research at a scientific conference. In science, a poster is nothing like the posters you would decorate your room with. Rather, they're a very condensed account of your scientific project and results. And they really help you communicate your project to your fellow scientists and colleagues. What we did in this project is we invented a new microscopic quantum model that has some of the features you expect from black holes. Then for this model, we computed the time needed for scrambling of quantum information. What we also did is we calculated how long you need to wait until the Hawking radiation reveals whatever you have thrown into the black hole. Altogether, we can say that a black hole is a quantum scrambler, or as I said, shredder. In fact, it is the best quantum scrambler in nature, quantum scrambling everything that falls into it. But it expels its content as Hawking radiation. And if you collected enough of the Hawking radiation, you could piece back together whatever fell into the black hole. Hope you enjoyed this new perspective on black holes and see you next time.